we, we know firsthand of other situations where the local city council person is called over and over again and nothing changes unless we and others get involved right. in exposing yeah. a light on it and and that just it it it, it gives people a lack of confidence in their and their yeah. in their city and their in the city of Los Angeles uh, to do something that is supposed to be enforced I mean this is uh, yeah. you know uh, you feel for the person of maybe course. they've got yeah. issues yeah. that that uh, it makes it hard for them to, to clean this up but the rest of the neighborhood needs the city to step in yeah. and to enforce the laws yeah. and uh, I, I just wonder why why they haven't until now and maybe you'll find out during this 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 briefing She's actually, she's she's walking over to me. I know okay. you can't really see it, but she is half a block down. She is walking well, over, she's stay with taking. Um, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, you know, one of the things that's astounding, and I know I've said it earlier before, it looks like a trash truck has actually pulled up and dumped all of these trash bags. It's actually unfathomable to see it right here in front of us. And we have spoken to so many residents who have seen the media around us, Frank and Jessica, there are at least 12 cameras surrounded by me. I mean, people from network, people from Japan, the other, I'm, and Ed is gonna sort of pan over so you can kind of get an idea of just how yeah. many media uh, reporters are here. And so residents in this area pulled aside when they saw us and said, oh my gosh, are you here because you're here to announce that this is going to get cleaned up because we drive past it every single day and see it and hope that something is going to change. Sure. And so that is what we hope to hear in the coming minutes. I'll step aside now for the mayor. walked right by the, the microphones. She's um, it, it looks like the mayor and, and the council person, uh, Sorry, Katie Young Yaroslavsky, are looking at what neighbors in this neighborhood have been complaining about for months. We know the first citation on this home went back to 2014, according to Annie Rose Ramos. There was an attempt at that time to clean things up. But then again, a few months ago, or perhaps a year ago, I don't know exactly the timeline, but residents have, have told her they've been complaining about this for months. And it was only after all the media attention that finally we're now being told that they're treating this with a sense of urgency. And the, the question becomes, is there something in the city code that stops the city officials from doing something about situations like this? Maybe that's what it is. Maybe they're not uh, they have to follow some right. legal protocols and jump over some hurdles. I don't know, actually, but it, you, you, one does wonder why it takes so long for something like this to get addressed. So finally, it looks like the, the mayor and the council person are going to speak. Let's listen in. Come on, councilwoman. Um, I don't know how to describe this any other way than to say that this is just a tragedy. I mean, this is awful, and obviously, this has been developing for months. I, uh, I worry about the individual that is in this home. I'm not sure, maybe you guys know, if he's actually there today. But one thing that I can tell you is that we are going to do everything we can to begin to clear this today. I don't want to hear about any process or whatever. This, to me, is a public health emergency. This is a fire hazard. And I worry about the individual there, this place catching fire, him losing his life, the quality of life that is compromised by, uh, for these neighbors. We just spoke to several of them, and I assured them that we are going to mobilize any and every city agency, and this will be dealt with today. Councilwoman. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I spoke with uh, Dr. Barbara Ferrer last, late last night she informed me that Department of Public Health had been out here yesterday, their environmental department had issued a citation that authorizes us uh, to abate this. And so that's what we're gonna do today. And um, it's not acceptable, it's just not acceptable. And we're gonna be doing outreach to the community to make sure they know that our office and the mayor's office, our resources, connecting them to our field staff so that they know who to call whenever something like this or much lesser than this comes up in the neighborhood because quality of life issues are really important to me and I know they're really important to Mayor Bass as well. And, and I will tell you the first time I heard about this situation was last night. Yeah. 
did not know about it before. Obviously, this has been going on for a while, and this is just outrageous, and why, it why will end it today. Why so long? I mean, is it, is residents here say it has been years like this. Yes. And they have called the city, they've called some council members. What Let me just happen? tell you something. <laughs> I am, both of us, as you know, are new. I am tracking this from last night to find out where complaints were lodged and what happened in the process. But I'm not going to spend time on that, wasting time on that. My focus today is getting this done today. I'm tracking it at the same time, but I got to act while I track. So what can we expect today? What can, you can expect today is you can expect the city agencies to come out, LA San, Building and Safety, you can expect to see them today. And as far as I'm concerned, they will begin removing this today. Now, the process that is happening right now is building and safety, and maybe you can help me with this, Councilwoman. Building and safety needs to come up and put up a citation. But while that is happening, I said I want all of the city agencies mobilized. I don't want to hear that we put up the citation and now we're going to do X, Y, and Z. They need to happen at the same time. Mayor, what would happen if uh, the owner of the house refuses anyone from the city to come in and clean this up? Yeah. What would be so, so we've been working with the city attorney's office. They're uh, drafting up uh, a statement that this is an imminent um, public safety and health risk. Um, obviously, this is untenable. Um, people have, have said they've seen rats and, and other rodents. Um, it's a fire hazard. And so we're, we're going to be acting on that authority. And so that will be posted within the next hour or so. That was what I was saying, which then allows us to go in because this is an imminent danger. Sunday night. So we'd received one one call in December about this and we uh, immediate, my field deputy immediately reached out to DBS and building and safety. Building, sorry, Department of Building and Safety. Uh, and this is part of, a, look, eight, 10 years of ongoing violations. There are 23 um, instances of citations, starts to get cleaned up and then doesn't fully get cleaned up, but, but we're gonna fully take care of this. Have you 23, talked to your... 23 instances of citations against this homeowner? Yeah, and tenant. The most recent one that was issued yesterday by County Public Health was issued against both the homeowner and the tenant. So it's clear that obviously this has been an ongoing issue and somebody knew about it. Isn't That's it why I said that we are tracking that too, but I am not going to track it before I act. I'm going to track it and act at the same time. Have you talked to the homeowner at all at this point? Yeah, is he going to get mental health help or just We have not talked to him. I believe he needs to get whatever help he needs. Um, what was your first impression question. again when you saw this? My first impression? I was just outraged and saddened because this is reflective of a much deeper issue. This is not just somebody who is irresponsible. Um, Any closing? It's inappropriate to make diagnosis, right. but this is obviously somebody who is in a crisis and needs help but the entire neighborhood needs help when you have a situation like this. Um, is the tenant the same person as the owner of the seven-year-old man? I do not know. I don't, I don't, Thank you so much. I don't know. Care. Councilman, do you have any closing thoughts? No. All right. Thank you so much, everybody. Mayor and Councilman, take this. He's gathering right now. He left early this morning with his cart. Oh, he did? With his cart? He has a cart like this one right behind you. He's going to cart and collect all the recyclables yeah. and yeah. bring them back. Yeah. Neighbors, neighbors say he's said. really nice. No, he wasn't this morning. Uh, it, nice it, it looks like they're wrapping up uh, and, and they're going to leave the, the scene here. But Annie Rose, I just want to uh, clarify with you. Did, did Council Member Yaroslavsky say that the first she heard of, of this was December? That, that was when they, she, yes. her office was contacted? Yes, does that, December. Does that line up with what? And that was when some of... Does that line up with what you've heard from, from residents who've been talking to you? Yes, that's when residents say right around Christmas, it started ramping up 
to a, a level that they had never seen before. He'd always collected junk in his yard. He's always had a couple of trash bags in his yard, but they all said, listen, this is manageable. Maybe one day after, you know, he said he was dealing with surgery recovery, maybe one day he could clean it up within an hour. They weren't concerned. But then right around Christmas, it started to ramp up where it was multiple feet of trash bags piled on top of each other to a place where they didn't even think that the front door was accessible. And so that is when that really escalated. They started calling, but as you heard her say, you know, she became aware of it. Uh, notices were issued, but nothing happened. Nothing changed when you're looking at those piles behind me. If anything, it got worse. And, and, and so she, that and she, really just, led to frustration. Just to be clear, she said that she only heard, her deputy heard one complaint, that only one person from the community contacted the city council person's office. I personally find that hard to believe. It may be true. Would, um, and, that, and that's what I'm asking. Did other it's residents- not consistent. It's not consistent with what we have heard. We have spoken to at least four residents on this block who say they have contacted council members, they've contacted the city, they've contacted the Department of Health and, and Safety. And so that is why it's, it's not aligning with what we're hearing with folks here on the block, even folks who live multiple blocks away, who say we just drive by this every day and are concerned with what we're seeing. So not necessarily consistent with what we heard. Yeah. Annie Rose, we appreciate uh, your coverage of it. And again, Mayor Bass saying she's going to deal with this today. So we're going to have to follow up uh, to see if that is indeed the case.